What's the easiest way to make a minimum thousand pounds a month from property? Hey, it's Chris here from Property Abundance. And in this video, we're gonna look at the different strategies that you can use to generate returns of up to a thousand pounds per month just from property. Now, look, the first thing we wanna address is why you should be investing in the first place. And there's tons of reasons that you need to be investing for your future. Firstly, if you're in a job or an employment, you need to have additional sources of income. Okay, it's never been more the case than it is right now. Look how turbulent the world is right now. Look how we've had you know, kind of back-to-back -back crises, right? We had um, COVID, a bunch of people got laid off work, all of a sudden weren't sure where their salary was coming from. We've had the uh, Russo-Ukrainian war that continues to this day, sending inflation through the roof, and all of a sudden people that could just about afford to live from what they were earning now can't. You know, so it's never been more important really than to have this additional stream of income coming in so that you are never reliant on just one source. So with that said, why do I think you should be in property? Well, look, property is always and has always been the safest investment out there. Look, there are tons of other businesses you can run for sure, but there are very, very few businesses out there that will pay you genuinely life-changing sums of money on a monthly basis and go up in value over time if you have one of the ownership models. So with that said, it's really, really important that you start investing in property straight away. Now, you've got a few options when it comes to that. And what, what's the right option for you is going to be different depending on you know, a few different circumstances that you're in. So, you know, for example, if you're time rich but cash poor, you might want to be looking at the rent to rent strategy because there you don't even need to buy a house. You can just lease a house. Um, you know, if you've got lots of surplus capital and it's just sitting in your bank account being eroded by inflation, you might want to look at a buy and hold strategy where you just buy a house. Um, use it for one of our creative cash flow strategies that we're going to talk about in a bit. Um, but you just wait with that house and you let it go up over time. You let the value appreciate as the market does so. Um, or you could look at one of the more creative versions of that, which is called a buy, refurb, refinance strategy. This is my personal favorite strategy for investing in property. Now, in this instance, we're going to buy a property for as little as possible. We're going to then add as much value to that property as possible using things like extensions, attic conversions, decorative refurbs, you know, modernization, uh, and then looking at the plot of land that the property comes on and seeing if there's opportunity to add value by manipulating the plot that we have as well. Then what we do is refinance that at the back end. We get it revalued and refinance it based on the new value to draw the equity back out. Now, if you do that, that means you've then got your money back to be able to go and invest in the next deal. Okay, you've got your, your deposit for the next one. Now, buy and hold, buy, refurb, refinance. Obviously, you need some money for this. Now, there's nothing to say it has to be your money, but you do need a source of finance for this, for the deposits. Now, there's institutional lending where you can borrow, well, even now up to 75% of the purchase price and 100% of the development cost for uh, buy, refurb, refinance projects, which is a phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal shift in the market. Until fairly recently, it, you could only borrow 65% of the purchase price and 100% of the development costs for, um, for bridging finance. So um, markets are getting more flexible. Uh, just a few, well, it's just a couple of weeks ago now, we had another 100% um, uh, owner's mortgage reintroduced. Now, again, is that a good idea? Probably not, probably not a good idea, because again, we get into that, that risk of uh, negative equity for people if the market takes a tumble. Um, so anyway, buy, refurb, refinance, great if you've got cash, great if you've got cash that you're looking to invest and get a much better return on. If you don't have cash, then obviously you've got rent to rent. There is still an investment required there, but on average, you're gonna spend between five and 10,000 um, pounds of investment to get your rent to rent off the ground. But look, even if you can't afford that much, like we're not talking huge sums there, five to 10 grand, but even if you can't, if you can't even afford that and you've got no money to start with, then you wanna be looking at a couple of strategies like management, where you're effectively putting your time and expertise into a deal to run somebody else's property, or joint venturing with owners, um, where again, they might put the property in, you might bring the, the time and the expertise. And again, it's like management, but instead of charging a fee like you do with management, you're, you're taking your returns based on the profit that the owner of that property gets. Now again, these are great strategies to scale, scale your business rapidly and make the most of the systems that you've already built uh, and put in place from your operational team as well. So within Trade States, my service department business, we do a lot of managing of other people's properties as well as buying our own, as well as doing rent to rent deals, as well as doing joint ventures. So, you know, the more you do, the more you can consider different options, but whichever is right for you will be based on your criteria and the criteria we've just run through there. Now, the purpose of this video is for me to tell you what's the easiest way to do it. And I think the easiest way right now is rent to rent combined with service accommodation. 
Okay, because this will, this, well, in fact, let me justify that first of all. Firstly, it's the simplest acquisition strategy. Okay, so all you're doing there is leasing a property with someone's permission to use it for something else, i.e. short lets. So in terms of getting the property, in terms of getting it set up, there's no development work for you to have to do. There's no kind of massively complex um, acquisition process to go through, no conveyancing contracts, no solicitors. You can just use a simple lease document to lease that property from the owner, obviously making sure that you have their permission to sublet that property as well. But why now? Why is now a really good time? Well, look, we are just entering the summer season. As I record this, it's towards the back end of May. So we are really now into the summer season and we're seeing across the board, our occupancy rates have absolutely skyrocketed. We are trying to source properties faster than ever before, simply because we, um, like we filled all of them. So whenever we go into management clients and we're pitching management clients for our trade state service, we're, you know, one of our opening things is, well, look, we've got bookings waiting to go into your property right now. So you know, if we manage your property, they're yours. They'll go straight in. So that summer season is a really good time to launch. Now, again, there's another reason for that, and that's to do with the way that the algorithms work on booking sites like Airbnb, like booking.com. Now, the way that they work is, look, they make their money from charging you commission for getting you bookings. So if they can sell more of your property, they will make more money. So if your property sells really well, it improves your ranking on their page because they wanna push you harder because you sell well. So launching into a peak market like now, so kind of your ideal time window for launching a service department is really like March until June because that's pre-peak, like July, uh, July and August are your real peaks but that's pre-peak, so you get this nice upward trajectory in the amount of bookings that you get coming in, and that really helps your algorithm score, so when you go into peak and you're just booked, 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 um, you are maximizing your profits, you maximize your income, you've got that first month out of the way, because we always have this bedding in month for the new service department launch, where um, you know we haven't got all the bookings just yet, but they take a couple of days to come in, or a couple of weeks to come in sometimes. So that, that gets the first month out of the way in the quiet time, it gets you some really good bedding in time, and it means you can charge higher prices later in the season and really maximize your occupancy. So summer season makes it a great time to launch. Now also, service accommodation is really, really simple right now because it's completely unregulated, okay? There's no regulation that means you don't have to get a license, you don't have planning permission requirements at the moment. That may change in the future, but right now, you don't need any regulations, so you can just crack on. It's a permitted development. You just get the property, you stick it on Airbnb, you get going. And that leads me nicely into the third one as well, which is there are established marketing platforms out there that you can just jump straight onto, like the Airbnbs of the world. Now, booking.com is a little harder because there's a bit more regulation there. They like to check you out a bit more and make sure that your property is legitimate. But with Airbnb, you can literally set, get set up and get it live within just a couple of hours. So these established marketing platforms make it really easy for you to actually sell and find customers for your property as well. So because of the summer season, because of a lack of regulation and because of the fact that there's established marketing platforms, if you're looking to make a thousand pounds per month on average from a property in the simplest way, right now, my go-to strategy for you would be rent to rent service accommodation. Now look, if you wanna learn how to do that, please check the description down below or depending on where you're watching this, you may wanna check the comments as well. Uh, and there will be a link where you can book a 30 minute call with one of my team, where we'll help you get clear on exactly how you can get into that strategy, what your next step should be. So we'll spend a little time getting to know you where you are in your property journey right now and then give you advice on what your best next steps would be to progress that forward if you're looking to make a thousand pounds a month from property you don't even need to own. Now look, if you found this video useful, if you wanna stay up to date with regular tips and tricks out of my own multi-million pound property and well, serviced accommodation business, please make sure to drop a like on this video. Please comment down below what was the biggest takeaway from this and also hit the subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date with all of that extra content. Now, if there's, by the way, if there's something else you want a video on, go ahead and let me know in the comments as well. I'm always open to suggestions on our content. We have a content schedule a few weeks in advance, but what we've always got is like a rolling schedule. So if you wanna uh, get a video done on a specific thing, if you want me to talk about a specific area of my business, go ahead and let me know in the comments what that is, and I will release a video for that onto the content schedule as well. Other than that, guys, have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.